It's time for Florida State football. This is the Jimbo Fisher Show. The Jimbo Fisher Show is brought to you by the Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling. SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. Ram, come in and get a great deal on the best trucks during Ram Power Days. Nix Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe. Hello and welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Tom Block and Coach Jimbo Fisher. Coach, congratulations. Uh, it's always great when you play well against your rivals. You get a win 38-22 over the Gators. Yeah, it is. I mean, great to get down there and play in the swamp. A very tough place to play. And again, they have very good defense. They had some great players on offense. Our defense was outstanding in the game. Our offense was very opportunistic. Scored touchdowns down there when we had to. Made big drives. Got a couple big drives in the second half there that were critical. I thought we punted the ball very well. Kicking game did a good job. They had a couple returns on us on the kickoff return, which scared me a little bit, but other than that, we played a really good football game. Yeah, Logan's had a really good year he uh, has. as this season has he worn has. on. And, you know, there's been a lot of talk uh, about streaks, trying to keep a bowl streak alive, uh, which you've done, trying to keep the, the consecutive non or consecutive winning season streak alive. But, but, but things that are already, you can check the box, five in a row over the Gators has never been done by Florida State, yeah. and four in a row in Gainesville, which is a tough place to play. It's extremely tough. I mean, the teams they have, and one of the toughest in college football. And I can say, that's why I say people say, what do you got to play for? All right, you didn't win a national championship or conference championship, but you just achieved something and never been done in school history, this group of guys and this group of seniors. I mean, think about what that, I mean, it's never, there's very few things here that haven't ever been done because <laughs> we got such great tradition. So to be a part of that and do that, there's a lot of things to play for. I'm very proud of our guys for doing it. And those players, as they get older, you know, uh, Time and age will lend perspective, and they'll be appreciative. They were part of that team that uh, went on no doubt. Against. No doubt. All right, a lot of highlights to get to. We'll do that as soon as we come back right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, uh, your team on the road in Gainesville. Beautiful day to play some football. Florida wins oh, really the well. toss decides to take the ball instead of defer. Yeah, they did, and uh, try to get get something established. And you know, some you know that's the old school way of doing things, which is nothing wrong with it. You you feel very good at times, you know. There and they and they it paid off because they hit. We got screwed up here in our, our coverage. We avoided two guys avoided the wrong way. We got pinned, kept kicked out, and uh, and they started running the football. Big run right off the bat. Our defense, you know, they they were getting after them a little bit in the beginning. So good tackle there. There they go, get, keeping the run game going. There's uh, Derek Hopkins makes a real nice play. Good Trey Marshall went on the play. Uh, Derek Naughty up inside, you know, Derek and Jacob Pugh had another outstanding day. There they get a little sprint right here, luckily third down. We got to him just in time. We got that for Derwin. Again, I thought Derwin had another really good football game. He and Brian Burns up front, you'll see later on, and Sweat. Great play on fourth down. They went for it, gamble for it. We had a nice play. We got pressure on the quarterback, had leverage on the football. Devontae Taylor coming to make a play, which he made plays all day. Here we get a nice little screen route out, get, get the ball going. I get about four or five yards on the first play and get a good positive deal. And then we missed, he just missed the cut. Watch the cut to the left. See the hole? I mean, there was that giant hole. Cam just, Cam wasn't his normal self. He had some good runs, but he just wasn't quite, he missed a couple cuts that day and missed on the short yardage that we could have had. He just, just a hair off and uh, had a chance to uh, break that open and we could move the football there very well. So we get back, they get on the first play, they're going to take a shot and there's Brian Byrne. He does that, I mean, you know how many times I see that in practice? I mean, just coming off that edge and he's really getting that timing and rhythm and those moves down and Jacob Pugh scoring a touchdown. When you score on, I know non-offensive touchdowns, and we did two in this game and set up two others and really should have scored three. That, that's an amazing day for a defensive football team. Two weeks in a row with two non-offensive exactly touchdowns. Exactly right. That's big. And that's why I say you want to talk about give teams confidence and builds things and really changes the dynamic of your team. Here they go. Again, that low, the pal, the little receiver running back, he's a versatile guy now. Kick returner can do a lot of things. Felipe, they got a third down. They pick it up. Get, get, uh, he got to get a man right and beat the guy. There's Fred Jones trying to get a rush going up in there. And... Uh, you know, they little pop a little power play. Again, getting back out of there. Nice tackle right there by Trey Marshall, but they're moving the football. They're moving the football. They had a good plan. They had good, they had good, do a good job up front. Popped it here. Nice job right there by Tavares McFadden. Good tackle influence. His helmet came off, but at least he stuck it in there and made a really good tackle. There, they get bobble a snap. Little things like this make it in. Watch Matthew Thomas take off here. You can see his athleticism there now. On the sideline, is running by people, and that's one thing Matthew does when he can play in space. Here they pop a screen out. Great leverage, great leverage off by Roderick Hoskins, by Jacob Pugh. They kept it right in front of him, allowed the, the help to get there and really leveraged that playoff very well. Here they go on third down, again, scramble. There's Cyrus Fagan, those young freshmen. Boy, those guys keep making play after play. He and Stanford Samuels and Marvin and all the guys now. 
uh, on defense. They're doing uh, they're doing a great job. Here they hit a big punt. Get it down there, and uh, luckily we got in the end zone. Gets coming out. This is a, this right here. This there's too much air on this ball. He got to flatten it out just a hair and just stick it on him. That's a big 25, 30 yard gain right there on the second one. We had a it's just not a good ball by James right there. But then right here, the interception one there. Watch him grab the tight end. Held the tight end right there. And the curl right, he threw it perfect. Auden, that's a rarity for Auden. He just went through his hands and he dropped it. We had a first down. And I was actually, when I saw it hit Auden, I looked down to make sure he had the first down. I didn't even see the ball tip up for the interception. I was waiting for it. And unfortunately, defensively, we couldn't stop him. They ran it right down our throats right here. And uh, one of the few times that uh, we couldn't hold him to a field goal and they popped it in the end zone, tied the game up 7 7. And we had huge momentum and he gave it right back just on a drop ball. A missed throw. Was led to third down and then a drop ball. Their kicker, he did a good job kicking off, and Derwin is close to bringing this out. We, we the angle of a block right here on that. We had the one guy, we could have really made a big return here. We got it out to the 30, which was good. Got another chance. Here we go. Nice back shoulder fade throw. Uh, great catch by Odd and Tate. Boy, he went back and redeemed himself. He got a big play right there and wanting to play. And he, he, he's been a warrior all year for us. Here we come back to third down, got third and long. After some missed a play and had to get a screen right. And if we make that block, it's a big play. That, it was a man screen play that could have really taken off and, and went. Here we go. Great job of covering our kicks. And boy, we changed the field position. They didn't field so you say when you didn't field some of those punts, how big a difference it makes. Great job right there. I can't see who is that. Matthew Thomas making the play. A good job of holding up, hearing the whistle, not getting a late hit, and getting something crazy. Here we go. Pressure. Rallying back to a Mar big saw big Marvin in there. Great hit by Matthew. And Another one I can't tell, and you saw Kane Doe in there. Boy, he's making a big impact as a freshman. The group is really good. And they get a tip ball, and there's Levante Taylor. What a day he had now. What a day he had. That's a huge play for us to get down there and have a chance to, to go in and get a touchdown. The good thing offense, we capitalize on it. Here we get a little zone play. Ah, we got to stay up. We got to stay up. We missed a block. We're one inch. We're about one guy, about half a man from the break. Here, third down. Great read on the backside. When he breaks a hash read off, really took a shot to the head right there. Could have been possible targeting, but. You know, big third down conversion. The guys a touchdown right there in the red zone. He got up 14-7. Yeah, getting a little bubble screen. They're doing a good job. Derwin's trying to play run pass in between. They caught him, you know, on the run and taking the fake. Good job by Stanford getting up. Blocking the throwing lane. Boy, look at that. Gets a sack. Great job. Here's he and Cyrus Fagan, two true freshmen. They'll be really good players. Burnsy. Nice kick right here by their guy. He gets it up. We, we, we did a good job fielding most of those. DJ got it. At least hey, got three or four yards. Got the ball not rolling on the ground. Here we get a little pop screen out here. Now, just got to stick that. Now, go ahead and go north-south, right? We ended up getting about three. Should have got about five or six, but it's all right. We're moving the football. Well, we get a little naked play right here. Throw it back to the tight end. Had a double post and throw, throw back to the tight end. Big play right there. Nice job by Ryan Izzo. Big gain down to Renda. Starting at, you know, they're 32, so we're in field goal range and driving. Run a little kick play, seal play. Uh, nine gets a nice job right here. And boy, nine, what a warrior he is. What a really great job he does. Now, this is the one I wish. We pop a power play right here. Now, right there, you got to make him miss and score, Jacquez. That gun, that's the one thing I wish we'd have back right there. He, we don't get in on touchdown here. We run a, a, a power uh, play here and uh, get stopped on the same one. Miss the same play we just ran a minute ago. Missed one block. Now, on third down, great job here by James. They played everybody. There's, there's experience. Throwing the ball in the back of the end zone. Kick the field goal. Take what you got. And a great job by Ricky Aguayo. Hits it right back up in there. Now we're up two scores, 17-7. Great job by the guys. You know, they get, they're trying to get to the edge. Look at Burn. That's where that length, that athleticism, that length. But you see Levante Taylor setting the edge out wide. Did a great job. There they go. Naughty. Boy, you talk about played outstanding in the day. There's Josh Kando forcing him to Josh. He gets a win, half, and Felipe has to throw the ball away. We're back to punting, and then uh, you know our rush. We went at him a couple times, come close to blocking a couple, and hurried him. And you know we got to get a short punt right here because they're worried about the block. And we got away and got the ball. And here we get a nice little run play. Cam, now that's Cam being Cam, dropping them pads, making that five-yard run, seven-yard run, really good job. A third down here. This is a shame. That ball's got to get up, but Ryan's got to catch it. It's right on his back hip. He should catch it, and we should throw it better. That could have been about a 15-yard gain right there. We're in field goal range again and going down to get points. That's a, that's a miscue. We, we, let some, we left some things out there on offense and then throwing and catching just, just a hair off. Now they pop it back inside. Good job by Matthew Thomas. Good job by Josh Sweat, who had another outstanding game. Christmas inside there. Sweat again, battling the ball, getting again in a guy's face. And there's Avante Taylor, makes a great read at corner, squats on it, breaks on it, and then not only pick, but a pick six. I mean, to have a pick six, that's awesome. What a play. 
gets us up three scores. And this is the only time I was disappointed one time. This is the drive we need to stop. And they pop a counter play there. We got to set that edge and get up in there and feel that better. Because we're up three and they get back to, they get down and get this drive right now. Great job by Kando right here. Boy, look, that guy just gets better and better and better. Josh Sweat bringing the rush. Now they as a fourth and six pickup. What we did, we didn't make a, I didn't now a call and, and to bracket it down when it went inside, four should have made a call and we could have bracketed it down with the safety and cut it off. And we did it earlier and just missed the call right there. And then they get a little screen pass. Derwin misses his guy. Derwin is human too. He misses one every now and then. And then they're back inside. Great job. Oh, boy, just inches. Derrick Nani makes that ball get high and then Derwin almost picks it. They throw it, get a, we play and run right here and they get back out to a bubble. And uh, we got them on the ground. That was first and four and a four. They're driving down. Here they throw it. And I mean, that, that's not bad cover. That's a tremendous throwing kick. Get, tip my hat to them right there. We had good leverage. You know, Stanford played it pretty well. They just made a little better play than we did. But again, then we pushed through and blocked another kick. And I believe there's another, that's a lot of kick we blocked this, this year. And our guys, and uh, Wally, aimed, Wally did that right there. And a big, great job by him. And that keeps the 11-point game different 10. That makes you have to get a two-point conversion and a field goal. So that's a big point. The uh, big play of the first half, you can you can pick on the defensive side of the ball here. You had two defensive scores. Two pick six. I mean, you had either one of them with a strip by Brian Burns and Jacob Hughes scoring or Devontae Taylor getting the pick. But you got two of them in the first half like that which was huge. And if we could capitalize a cup more time, we moved it on offense once on a nice drive, converted on another turnover and scored. And if we could have got one other drive there, we missed a player too. We could have had a heck of a first half. No question about it. Florida State gets the ball to start the second half too. We'll get back to second half highlights right after this in the Jimbo Fisher Show. one day every year in November is super special. It was just something about orange and blue. It just wasn't a good color combination for us. We got a lot of respect for Miami, but when it comes down to Florida Gators, I don't like them at all. When you play your rival, if you don't get emotional, I mean, let's face it, you shouldn't be on that field. To see that orange and blue, it just burns my eyes. You got to live with it for 365 days. And this is something that people are going to talk about for years. Any win over Florida is my favorite football game of the season. I'll tell you that right now. We stepped on that field with the mindset that we weren't going to quit. This is the rivalry that started it all. Florida State, Florida, the Seminoles and the Gators. A rivalry steeped in half a century's worth of goal line stands and fourth quarter comebacks. In 1990, Steve Spurrier returned to his roots to coach the Gators and the rivalry was intensified. Florida had been beaten down and they'd had some problems. They had been on probation. They needed a new look and they brought in Mr. Florida football, Steve Spurrier. And here was Bobby Bowden doing his thing in Tallahassee, Florida. So you had two great coaches, two great teams, two great programs battling each other. It was always good to beat Florida when he was there. And, and I guess probably the biggest thing that, that we could say is that Steve never won here in Tallahassee. And he probably still remembers that too. 1993 uh, will always stand out to me because uh, Florida State was ranked number one in the country. And we get to Gainesville, it's, the, it's late in the ball game, it's the fourth quarter, and on third down and 10, Charlie Ward did his thing. He avoided a sack, he rolled a little bit to his left, he threw the pass to Warwick Dunn, who made the catch, missed tackle, missed tackle, and one guy had a chance to tackle it. He separates. 30, he separates, he's in the and Took it into the end zone and scored the touchdown. Touchdown, Florida State! Anytime you beat your arch rival, at home, that's special. When you do it at their place, that just makes it extra special. They were all pretty big games. You look at 94, commonly referred to as the choke at Doak. Steve Spurrier knew his team was gonna to come to Tallahassee and beat us. And they had us on the ropes going into the fourth quarter. We're down four touchdowns, 31 to three. It's four quarters, it's 60 minutes. No matter what has happened in the three prior quarters, it's not over till that last second takes off. Rock Preston, 3 2 1, touchdown FSU, tied the ball game. Blitz threat, here's the snap, handoff to Preston, Preston, 3 2 1, touchdown, 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 touchdown. A point away from a tie with a minute 45. Do you go for two? Jado, you know, my friend, I'll tell you exactly. Bobby knows Steve Spurrier, he's not going to go for two. He's going to get the point after, and he knows that Steve wants to win so bad, he'll make a mistake. And son of a he did. We just kept saying, throw Spurrier, throw. 
Danny Cannell almost got us into the promised land, and we just ran out of time. Maybe the greatest comeback ever in college football history. We ended up going over to New Orleans, playing in the Sugar Bowl for the fifth quarter and the fifth quarter. And fortunately, we won that game. French Quarter belongs to the Seminoles of Florida State. They beat the Gators 23 to 17. Both the Gators and the Seminoles were ranked in the top 10 in every matchup from 1990 to 2000. Most contests had national title implications, none more than 1996. 1996, Florida State versus Florida. Number one versus number two. The place was packed, Bill Campbell Stadium. Both teams were passing oriented football programs. With the wind in your face, you had no chance of throwing the football. Well, you probably can ask Danny Warfel about the game, and uh, he would probably say, and I guess maybe he did, that there's some pretty good hitting going on in the game. You know, we never taught a kid or asked a kid to hurt another player. That, that just wasn't the way we did things. Coach Biden wouldn't put up with it. But we did have a little deal with the players. Let's try to put something on them that soap and water won't wash off. You can't wash off a bruise. And if a guy gets hit enough times that he decides he didn't want to play anymore, that, that was his choice. Warwick Dunn probably played his best game of his career against the University of Florida. Had about 150, 160 yards rushing, and FSU prevailed by a field goal. Unfortunately, we had to end up playing them again in, in the Sugar Bowl, and they waxed our ears. They had a better plan of how to protect Danny. Two-thirds of our football team came down ill. We got in the bowl game and uh, they ambushed us, I'll tell you that. The 99 FSU team was one of the greatest in history, defeating Florida and winning the national championship. The rivalry's intensity would fade in years following until tempers flared in 2003. Well, it was one of those games like it was a lot of time with them. Thank goodness that our offense bailed us out that day. We had just converted fourth down, had the ball at midfield about the 49-yard line. I remember that play vividly. Chris Rich threw it down to P.K. Sam. Big old rainbow the thing the up in the zone. air. He's got P.K. Sam open. He makes the catch. Yeah. Touchdown, FSO. Touchdown, P.K. Sam. 55 seconds left. I don't know how in the world he got open. 52 yards. Florida State leads. And that was the winning touchdown in the ball game. And it came with less than a minute to go in the game. And Gator fans were just absolutely distraught. It got kind of quiet there on that touchdown pass, but there was a lot of hooping and hollering going over there with the Seminoles. All I know is that when you go to Gainesville and uh, you're underdogs and you win, uh, it's electrifying to be a Florida State Seminole. The rivalry between Florida and Florida State is bigger than the players on the field and more legendary than the coaches on the sidelines. The teams are playing for something greater than victory, something more permanent. As the next page in the rivalry is written, fans can always count on witnessing history. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, you have that 11 point lead at the half. You get the ball to start the second half and, and obviously the objective Make it a three-score score game again. Exactly right, and this one disappointed. We come out of the first play. We had two good plays. We, we had ran well in the first half. And we ran both of them, not worth a darn here in the second half, starting off, and that, and that was a shame. And then we had to come back and make a third down. Now what's bad? He makes a great throw. We got to catch that ball. That ball right through Keith's hands. He got to make that. He ran it back through a back shoulder go fade right there, and uh, usually Keith makes those plays. Keith, I tell you what, Keith did a great job. Block. He had a linebacker on that seal play a little bit ago, knocked a linebacker on his back, and receivers don't do that very often. Big physical guy. Great job on the counter play right here. They got some momentum in the third quarter. We, we missed it. Had a couple plays that we thought would be no gain, and they got two or three extra yards here and there, and picked up a little crossing route here, and just kept nickel and diamond the ball down the field. Matthew and the guys there is Westbrook in on the play. Yeah, they get a little boot naked. You know, good job right here by Sweat, harassing it and uh, making pressure and forcing that ball to get you know, get out of here and uh, get away and make a throwaway. It's a great job by Sweat of setting the edge and, and playing, his, playing his role. Here they are, great job. Derek Nottie gets a nice sack right here. Great job by Derek. Again, just for a big guy, man, can rush the passer inside. You know, they hit the punt. He had a big punt, too. Hit a deep one. That guy has a great leg. That's one that we were waiting for it all day, and we kept pressure on him, and then he finally got one, and we're pinned back here on the 10, and uh, get a little kick play again. This is the one that went for about 20 in the first half, and, you know, they uh, we just didn't get it executed. We missed a block inside. We had it for about six. would have been, it ended up being about three. 
You know, they get pressure right here. We got to get that ball out. We had a chance to get that ball in the flat, though. He could have thrown that ball in the flat. And he held on to that one just a hair. And we pop a power play to get back out, get some punting room, and we're up two scores. There wasn't no sense to give him a turnover down there, making our defense is playing great. So, you know, you don't want to do something stupid there with a the young quarterback. But again, great punt right here. They get Now we got to make that tackle. Come on, Matthew. Come on. Great job of getting it. Go ahead and throw. And they get the penalties here, which are totally off guard of what happened. I, I don't agree with that at all. They actually, we're holding Hampshire on the play. We were felt good on the sidelines. They come over and told us all that. We thought it was getting a holding call. Here they go, and they get the crossing routes again. They got, they're mixed up. Hit those, they're hitting RPOs, hitting the run pass, and hit the slants inside. Uh, we had outside leverage in the slot. Uh, we got to get that guy on the ground. See, they're missed sacks. Those are missed sacks right there. And we got a great job of covering down there by Kyle Myers did a great job, and you know, they hit a field goal, and now it's back to a one-score game. It's 24-16, but that, you know, that, that PAT was big, because now they just got to score a two-point conversion with us. We're up eight. Now, I don't agree with this. I think this is a catch, and you can see it clearly on T. He takes two steps with the ball. If anything, it's a fumble when we got it, but he takes and catches the football. Both guys over there called it, so I don't agree with that. And we pop it out here on third down play, and uh, get, about, get it back to about third and six. You're going to get part of it. And we're coming back right here, and they get pressure, and they had a late hit right here on the quarterback. And uh, we got we got a break right there and got, the, got that play back, and we're still moving the ball now. Pop a nice little zone play up inside. Great run right here, Jacquez. Run through arm tackles. Man, that easy makes about 11 yards. It should have been about a four-and-a-half, five-yard gain. Run through those arm tackles. Boy, what those big backs can do. Get a little sprint out right here. We missed the block on the backside, but if we don't, that ball's going to spit for about 20. Just missed the backside backer and then throw a fade. I, I don't like the throw. Right here, I thought one was interference, but two, he needs to throw the back shoulder fade like he did earlier. He needs to get down the back shoulder. Then right here, I'm, we drop it. We got to catch that ball. You know, and he just drops it on a slant route inside. We're going to have a first down inside the 30 and get. You now, that would, that would allow a field goal, which gets us back up to 10 points, or we can get down and score a touchdown. We get a two score game again. But we elected to punt. Our defense is playing well, pinned him back inside the 10. And there's Matthew. Thomas can't miss that. Boy, we got to get it. There's Josh Sweat. But at least he made him hold the ball enough for Josh to get there and the relentless pressure our defense is putting on. Nice little play action for them. And this is on third and 10. We got them come off their own 10 yard line. They hit a little sail right there and cover three. And they, they, you know, that, that's just, we got to get that, do better than that. Again, great job by Derek Noddy inside, man. Just throwing guys off of him. You can't block the guy. I mean, when he wants, he, he has learned to be uh, a real big force in there. Great job right here. Great rush, great job by Stanford Sound. Those young freshmen just getting more confident, more confident, more confident. Punt. It was a bad punt off the side. We couldn't get it fielded, but at least it was a short punt. So that worked out good. Hit a little counter play here. Oh, we hit that thing inside. We hit it inside. It has a chance to really go. But we get about five on the outside. We go to the fourth quarter. Up 24-16 and moving the ball. This is the play. Third and long. We hit that. We hit the verticals early. And usually those are plays James had been forcing things down the field. He dumps to his third receiver. We find the back, hit it perfectly, and uh, Get the big, get the big pickup. Now they get a, right here is a targeting. That should have been a targeting call, right? That's as targeting as anything is. And they got a face match. Should have been double penalties on that play. They didn't call the targeting. Uh, come on back right here on a boot. We have the throwback. Tight ends wide open. All we got to do is block the boot guy coming outside. We just missed the block. And that's a play we hit a lot. And we scored last year a couple times on that thing. This is another great read. We have the ball play called the other side. He reads the coverage, goes back to the inside seam on this side, hits Ermin Lane. Again, another two big third down. I mean, uh, there's a second long, there was a third and long. Now we get a nice run inside. Now we get it back in there. We're moving the football. We're definitely going to be up to have a chance to be up two scores with this, but we want to score a touchdown. He checks this play. We had another play on. He saw the front. He saw the coverage. He checks us, checks us into the stretch play, and we pop it in there and score a touchdown. So James had a big part. The third down pickup, the great second long pickup, and then making a big check right there in the run game to, to get us in the right play, and uh, we score a touchdown. Now we're up two tight. And Matthew Thomas, this, this can't happen right here. This is ridiculous. This, this is utterly ridiculous. I love them and all that, but you can't go falling down. Why you'd want to do that, I don't know. I have no idea. And that's a three-score game because, all right, you get the ball, and we did score a touchdown, but if you have to kick a field goal to go up three and they block it, run it back, it's a one-score game. It's a great play by him. Why do that? Don't need to do that. Remember, this is a big third down pickup right here now. Big third down pickup. They, they played pass. We checked it into a run. So they had, they had the look taken away, and we popped it in there because we knew we had a field goal too. So, again, Jacquez running really hard right here. We're down the two-yard line. Pop it. Now we get back to third and two. Pop it. And then we get Auden right in the back of the end zone. Great throw by James. Well, we get it. Nobody gets it. Use his size off the back of the end zone with a great play action, and that's a big time. Now we're up three touchdowns, about seven, eight minutes to go in the football game. Here they are. Boy, if he could have turned around, he had a chance to pick that one, A.J. did. Great coverage right there by A.J. Now our defense, we get a, we get a 
strength. Now, here's the one that's disappointing. We had it for a no gain, and we missed about three tackles there, and he gets a first down. That would have put him third and long, and we'd have had the ball back and really could have sewed that thing up. Didn't like that happening. We've got to get the rush. They're back down the middle. Great strip right here by Westbrook. The guy went up, got his hands in the middle between his hands and ripped it out. Got the rush there. Great job by Burns again. The sweat. I can't tell who else. There's Kane Doe, I see, and now it must be somebody else. They have to punt it. And this is the one that we, we need to get this ball right here in four minutes and put it away. We're up three, and we, we missed this thing by half a yard. We get a zone play right here. If we, man, we bounce that thing a little more. Get about four on the first one. Pop his own play here. Man, we got to stay on that block, get about four, a little over four of that one, and, uh, and missed a counter play. That we just missed the block on a, on a guy ended up a half a yard short, and that was disappointing. Now Kyle got hit. Now what you got to do is immediately grab that football because they can come by and try to pick that up with no, no penalty and try to run and score with it. Great job now here. All right, now there's not much time, five minutes to catch him short of the first down, tackle, make him eat the clock, play well, play smart. You're up three scores. Again, now that was there. We need to stay in that zone right there. And they got a big first down. Can't get too soft right here. Hmm, good throw and catch. Got to strip it. Hamster got right between Hampshire. Hampshire got to play through the hands a little quicker. There they go, back to this side. Again, now we got him short of the stick, so the clock's running. So it's, it's going down now inside two minutes or so. We end up with the one. All right, get a tackle. Can't let that run pop out. Got to tackle better there, T-Mac. We're eating clock. I know they scored it's about 50 seconds. And they get to run RPO and get inside on the slant play, and uh, they get the touchdown right here, and it, it's unfortunate. But there's about 40 seconds to go, and they, they have a fake, fake PAT here. Guys did a great job of covering guys down. We tacked and, and held that play, and so it ended up 38-22. Uh, we got the onside kick, and like I say, going down and winning that game against the Gators is, is huge, especially for our seniors. That fifth-year seniors have never lost. Fourth-year seniors never lost to them, and uh, another rivalry. And to all of our alumni and fans that, you know, we, we did beat the Gators, and I know it's a big rivalry. It goes way back. The big play of the second half, maybe a big drive there, that drive that we saw where James oh. Blackman hit two third, third down throws, and they got a run check for a touchdown. Exactly. Yeah, right. Hit a run check, and then hit, hit, hit the check down to nine, hit the second long. We hit the backside of a route. and Just things that, you know, sometimes before he would want to make plays and, and try to do too much if it wasn't there, he was going through his progression, and you can just see his growth, and then the run check at the end, and then even on the third down throw on the last touchdown in the back of the end zone where he threw it. Tate's going to get it. If we don't, we're going to kick the field goal and still we have a chance to be up three scores. And just, like I say, even how you, the little things like that are just things in the growth of him, and that, which I've seen so much and very proud of him. Florida State gets the win, sets the stage for one big more contest, a big contest this week against Louisiana Monroe, and we'll talk about that when we come back. Stay with us. Today's final stats are brought to you by Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. Shop ChooseNissan.com, innovation that excites. Inside the Helmet is brought to you by Hyundai. My name is Naquan Murray. I play receiver. I'm a junior. I'm from Orlando, Florida. Yeah, I was, I was about six years old, playing with uh, a group of 11-year-olds. I was playing up in my age. Uh, that was my first game, starting safety. I did pretty good, actually. I was number 20. Uh, I had long dreads. I was younger. I was the smallest dude on the team, but I started. I played against Francois Little League, and I played with me and Jacquez played on the same team. Jacquez Patrick, he was the quarterback, I was the running back. And of course, Francois, he's always been the quarterback. He was about, probably about 10, 9 years old. Still got the DVD at the home championship game. Beat Francois in the championship. Uh, growing up, yeah, I played basketball. Played basketball for five, 10 years. Yeah, yeah, I can dunk. One step. Um. Uh, yeah, my family's pretty big. I got a lot of family pretty much everywhere. Family in Georgia, Orlando, Mississippi, all type of places. Big games, uh, my family get together. And all of them come down and watch me play. It's a, it's a pleasure having my family come and watch me play, putting on the show. I mean, she been doing that since I was six, since my first game, like I said. Uh, so everybody in the stands always know her. When she used to come to my high school games, you could hear her from the entry. Oh, there she's my grandma, there goes my grandma. She turned up the fan, turned up the crowd. She's a good lady to be around, I love her. You make grandma so proud. 
I like to play the game, play Madden, 2K. Sometimes we go out and shoot, shoot hoops, you know, or if not, we just go out and work out, and perfect our craft. I want to get back to, to kids back in Orlando, kids that don't really have it, the area that I came from, really. I just want to really get back to those kids, and I really want to have a business like uh, a sports business that sell equipment, apparel, and gear for kids, but like cheap. So I just want to start something like that back home. Chris Johnson, coming from Orlando, he went to Olympia High School, so seeing him make it and being in the NFL and making a big impact, he had a big impact on Orlando and a lot of kids in that area, including me, so seeing him make it gave me confidence and, and knowing that I can make it out. Well, really just being around my brothers every day. I love being around these guys, being able to go to practice, going to work with these dudes. But um, every moment is big here, so just got to cherish these moments. It's, it's, it's a lifetime bond. Like, I, I could be able to call one of these dudes and ask for anything, and they'll give it to me. They can call me and ask for anything, and I'll give it to them. It's just that, that brother bond that we have. Judy Dunlap's many contributions to FSU are well known. The new Champions Club is the latest culmination of their generosity. The club offers seat holders the opportunity to enjoy the complete game experience, inside and out. It's, it's incredible. It's high-end amenities, obviously. People can come in here and enjoy the food and beverage. They have a great social experience while they're in here talking to their friends. We've got televisions, we've got good air condition here. Everything is just first rate all the way. The Champions Club isn't the only first rate experience Al and Judy have created for FSU. Their many contributions will ensure the Knolls are well cared for on and off the field. They allow them to participate in the best facilities, practice, have the uh, best training, uh, and, w and whenever they are ill or injured, uh, the best rehab they can possibly have. We do these things because we believe it's the right things to do. We don't do it to get our name on a building. We do it to help young people. We were both born to extremely humble beginnings, and we worked very, very hard to achieve what we did, and to finally have the ability to do these things is so gratifying and makes all the hard work work. Neither Al nor Judy attended Florida State. So what drives their love for FSU? I was doing a speaking tour for the major colleges in America like Wharton, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, and someone said, would you speak at Florida State? And I said, Florida State, where the hell is that? But what we came, we left that long weekend so impressed by the students, the faculty, the coaches, and we said, this is a fantastic institution that we want to be part of. And since then, the Dunlops have donated more than $20 million to the university. That money has gone towards improving student success, enhancing athletic facilities, and creating the ultimate fan experience. I don't think there's anything like it uh, in a college football stadium in America that I have seen. We're very proud of it, and uh, we're, we're really happy for our fans who come here and cheer on the Seminoles. Between the School of Business, the uh, naming of the Champions Club, and being the lead sponsor on the indoor practice facility, we've added facilities that not only enhance our revenue to help provide athletics, which is the job of the boosters, but also directly help football and the School of Business achieve higher levels. Al and Judy Dunlap's generosity defies all expectations but their friends and family know their tremendous support is simply a reflection of the wonderful people they are. I feel privileged to know him and be involved in this type of a dedication to him. And obviously being a huge Florida State fan and having gone to school here, it makes you feel really good. For students and staff at Florida State, it is fair to say their generosity has affected everyone in its path. And for Al and Judy, we're just happy to see that our money has been put to good use 
and that we are here to enjoy it. We were so excited to come here tonight to see it, and when we walked in the door, you have no idea the great feeling it gives you. It's our chance to tell them thank you. It's just a small way we're saying thank you. The university couldn't be prouder to have the Dunlaps, and the Champions Club that now bears their name has such an important role in the legacy of Florida State. The Look Ahead is presented by Florida Farm Bureau Insurance. Register to win a football fantasy experience at KnowlesContest.com. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, you got one more game against Louisiana Monroe, and it's hard to fathom when you look back at this year. This was supposed to be week two, and <laughs> things got off track with the storm and a 21-day layoff. But here it is. The game was rescheduled, uh, and it's an important game. You've got a chance to get bowl eligible oh, if your team gets a win extremely here. Extremely important game. I'm going to keep the 40-35 alive, winning seasons, bowl games. And, you know, just to finish in the stadium the right way and to come back, and it's going to be very challenging. You come off an emotional game against your rival, and to play it down there, our kids are going to have a big challenge. I know they've got a lot to play for, but it's a tough thing to do. And it's been a long season, so but we still have a lot to play for. And, and the pride in these kids, and like I say, you, we went on like a, a playoff run. First game, second game, now we're in the third game. The first two don't mean anything if you don't finish it the right way. 12 noon. It's also a home game, too, so it's one yes. more chance at Doe Campbell Stadium. And fill that stadium up and, and let our seniors and those upperclassmen see it one more time. All right, 12 noon kick, Florida State, Louisiana, Monroe, this Saturday at Doe Campbell Stadium. Back with some final thoughts right after this. Welcome into Garnet and Gold Grub, presented by Tico People's Gas. I'm Katherine Phillips, alongside award-winning chef Travis Johnson, executive culinary director of Seminole Dining here at FSU. He's going to walk us through a delicious game day recipe using natural gas. Chef, we have a good one for all the vegetarians today. We really do. Really for anyone. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it does have a lot of flavor, and it has a, a great deal of protein in it as well. Okay. But we put together a uh, vegetarian burger today using some grains and legumes, things that are very nutritious and healthy for you but can still taste good because I think sometimes people think that healthy food doesn't taste that right. good but we'll debunk we'll that myth today. <laughs> so we are using all fresh ingredients. Uh, we start out with a wild rice uh, blend that we work with, our garbanzo beans and a mixture of uh, five different types of lentils. Okay. And we take the garbanzo beans and our lentils and we put them in a food processor and we go ahead and blend those together. While those are blending, we add in some fresh aromatics. So we're looking at our parsley, a little bit of green onion, some fresh lime, some spinach, just to give us some body and a little bit more, uh, more nutrients that we're looking for. And as that comes out of the processor, we end up with our, our patty mixture here. Okay. And so from this, we can make our patties that we want to turn into our burgers. Doesn't it have good color to it? It does. It looks uh, very pretty. <laughs> and it smells good. It has those, uh, again, the fresh herbs and aromatics yeah. to them. So just like you would be putting together the hamburger patties, you'd be putting this beautiful lentil burger together, ready to go. I have my skillet on. Drop it on and start searing that. You could season it, uh, again, with a little salt and pepper or whatever you like. Okay. And while this is cooking, uh, we'll look at how we're going to complement this burger. So we have a house-made brioche bun something we make here on campus oh, wow. and we'll toast this bun and while the bun is toasting and that burger is cooking uh, we've prepared another salad and this is what we call our, our garnet and gold salad okay but it's a mixture of our teardrop tomatoes fresh herbs and aromatics and a little bit of oil it'll right. complement it really well all right we got our toasted brioche bun and you have that on natural gas over there how does that help you in the kitchen I like using the natural gas when it comes to uh, firing up burgers or, or stuff because, especially if I'm complimenting it with cast iron or any cookery equipment, so I can control the heat. And like for right now, uh, for this particular burger, uh, given that it's uh, lean and doesn't have a lot of fats to it, mm -hmm. I want to cook that kind of on high, get a good sear to it, and then we can take this and we can finish it in the oven. Okay. All right, so we have our green burger, and now let's finish this off. So I have my bun, we have our brioche bun. Burger. That looks really good. And then let's add uh, let's add a little bit of lime juice just to the top to give us a little bit more flavor. Squeeze some fresh lime over top, and then we'll put that garnet and gold get the garnet salad and gold on there. 
That looks beautiful. That looks Top so this good. off. Should we try it? Let's do it. Healthy food does taste good. Healthy food does taste good. You showed everyone. For full details on this recipe and more information on how you can incorporate natural gas at home, in your business, or at your next tailgate event, go to peoplesgas.com slash cooking. Coach, earlier in the show, I mentioned that uh, Logan has been punting the ball well. Ricky's kicked it well. What's been the, the difference? I mean, not that uh, Ricky had some kicks coming out low early on. Logan was a little inconsistent, but it's been consistent for those yeah, guys been, this and, year. And not to get boarding and, and get your fundamentals down, know exactly your technique of how you're dropping the ball, what your steps are approaching the ball, the different things, whether you're punting or kicking, and don't get bored. I know that sounds simple, but you think, well, i got to change that. i got to tweak that. and Well, i got this. You know what I mean? I can do it over and over. And this is like a golf swing. I mean, I, I relate kicking to golf so much because how can a guy shoot 65 one day and 75 the next? You know what I mean? You get bored and little techniques go away, and it's a big concentration deal for kickers, and they've learned to do that, and the more mature they've got, the more consistent they've got. Yeah, and the results have shown on the field. Right, They're talented. They, they are. We've seen that. We are out of time, and we will see you next week right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. This has been the Jimbo Fisher Show, brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca Cola Zero Sugar. Taste the feeling. SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe.